Hi, uh, welcome back to Future Fast, and we have Pushpa with us, and uh, this is to understand uh, your journey, Pushpa, with uh, Garbagudi. So, uh, uh, how did it start? Where did it start? When did it start? Yeah. So, like I uh, mentioned, Garbagudi, uh, we are a chain of fertility hospitals. Started. Uh, journey in 2011 March, known for extraordinary success rates, ethical values, and holistic approach towards the fertility treatment. So these are the three value systems I would say uh, which we you know um, uh, do or uh, uh, I mean hold on to in Garbagudi. Today, if you look at fertility industry, it is becoming much on a you know uh, the success rate or I mean it is really going in a direction which is not supposed to sorry to say this but uh, holding on to the ethical values uh, while treating you know uh, infertile couple is really important so that is the biggest I mean gap which we see today in the industry so hence we made it as a point as one of the value system uh, inside Garbagudi we call it as Garbagudi way is that uh, you know holistic treatment ethical values and you know ex definitely extraordinary success rates so these are the three things uh, and like uh, I said we have about uh, six centers now and we are expanding pan india this year Anjana. why is it uh, 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 why is the need for something like this uh... yeah very good question this generation is driven majorly through clock right so every day clock management has become a big challenge and we, which is leading to stress. So the lifestyle, as you see today, has become a major bottleneck for us to take care of our health. So, and at the, if you look at our, I mean, time span also, because we are, I mean, really career oriented and we want to, I mean, have uh, right education for such, I mean, career uh, aspiration. So we end up uh, having our education till 23, 24. Sometimes, you know, if you are in a, clinical, I mean, medical side, till the complete MD it takes about, I mean, 27 years for them to uh, come out of the, you know, uh, being, uh, completing their master's, right? So, and then marriage and then family. So it goes up to 30 years. By that time, the fertility quotient, whether it is for male or female, for male, at least it's better. We have, I mean, some time, but especially for female, it is really challenging. So by the time they think of family, it's 30, 32 for them. So, and that's the biggest challenge today. And in, in this management of, I mean, in this time management of studies and then career, and then still continue to grow in career because it needs a lot of, I mean, upskilling for us to uh, achieve those career goals. I've seen people go through a lot of stress and which leads to uh, infertility. You know, one of the major costs, 80% is due to the lifestyle issues and the stress what you know for hence it has become a major problem to solve today and i'm seeing not only in urban areas rural areas are the biggest you know uh, uh, biggest i mean uh, challenge what they're going through in from rural area is because of the pesticides so they've started using chemicals and pesticides directly in hand they touch not even gloves right so these are the things which are really i mean contributing to fertility challenges well uh... Uh, I think we had a conversation earlier about it that uh, yeah. back in 2000, uh, we were doing some studies in the heavy metal poisoning. And mm -hmm. uh, one of the things heavy metal poison has a direct effect on is fertility. So uh, uh, back then in 2000, the study uh, came out with a uh, uh, higher percentage of uh, lead in our uh, blood to uh, water to milk to vegetables, fruits, everything. But this test was in and around Bangalore. And uh, so, you know, this is almost 22, 23 years uh, since then. And, uh, you know, the number of automobiles on road is like a uh, few hundred times perhaps. And uh, mobile phones didn't, uh, yeah, mobile phones were there. 98 it came, but I think very few of us used to carry mobile phones. But today, pretty much everybody carries and uh, electronic devices, everything run by battery. So uh, 
so I, I was also looking at uh, some study about how heavy metal poisoning is becoming more. So I think that is clearly another aspect that is uh, affecting. But uh, like you pointed, interestingly, the, the, some time ago, I was watching this uh, uh, conversation with uh, the then uh, PepsiCo chairperson, Indra Nui. And mm. uh, they were talking about uh, how did she manage to be a parent, a spouse, and a uh, global executive. So mm. uh, I think uh, the, uh, uh, she she managed it extremely well. Even the conversation, uh, what all she was able to articulate was uh, brilliant yeah. but uh, yeah. coming from there but still I think uh, we in India still need to have a structural change in the way people approach it right because one is it can't be this or that right it is not a binary option that either you got to exactly. pick a family way or you got to pick a, a career exactly. right See, this, this or that is the biggest uh, challenge so how do you address this kind of a thing in your yeah. iron lady kind of efforts uh, how do you approach this yeah so i mean since you, uh, you know, rightly mentioned like you mentioned crisis, iron lady i thought yeah. probably bring it into conversation yeah you rightly mentioned so actually since you're saying and that word also is coming from your and so it is not about today's life is not about this or that but it is about this and that Okay, so it 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 is called tat. So then, I mean, Iron Lady, I would like to quote uh, you know Infinity is a Mahatreya course which is launched now. Uh, it's called tat, life of this and that. So you need not, I mean, we need not worry whether I mean I should be a professional, you know, or a family person. Life of both this and that is possible. So just I mean, since you said, I'm just mentioning it. But coming to Iron Lady, yes, yeah. Uh, in the uh, one of the program called Leadership Essential Program in Iron Lady, the program believe uh, starts with this that how can we have certain ecosystem built for us from the personal perspective, from our personal life to the professional, right? Professional life, which we also explore in, right? So that program itself takes a detailed uh, roadmap towards how we can have a, uh, you know, maximized life. We we call balancing is for mediocres. We say maximize is for leaders, okay? So maximize everything, family life and the professional life. So that is the whole, I mean, leadership essential program, which we take them through in Iron Lady. So when you say that you talk about building a ecosystem, uh, that is uh, from your organization point of view, or you help them create an ecosystem in their family and uh, uh, like, see, I think you organically had an ecosystem with your brother and parents. Exactly. Uh, you know, exactly. probably you didn't have to think about it. It just fell in place. Yeah. For you. But yeah. uh, how do you structure that? I mean, if somebody does not have a, uh, uh, something which is already on a platter like you had you were probably very lucky to have had yeah. but yeah. Uh, someone who doesn't come with that kind of a system how do you advise them how do you help them to work towards creating that yeah lot i mean thanks for bringing this bringing this up i'm also a program leader at iron lady i lead sessions for corporate working professionals and uh, entrepreneurs as a passion uh, I have been trained by the Iron Lady team to do that. So biggest thing what I've seen uh, handling, uh, I mean, leading sessions for corporate working professionals and entrepreneurs is that even though they have, many people do not recognize it, biggest challenge, okay? And few of them do not have, like you said, not all will have that kind of an ecosystem starting from their childhood. So we just tell them one thing is that the impact of that, if they do not have that, they will be feeling, you know, I'm not the blessed one, right? So how should you, I mean, even look at creating such things for you and Iron Lady itself, a uh, community itself is that ecosystem for them, which we have built. We are about 5,000, uh, you know, uh, women across India today. Okay, it's a very big community. Then we stand, uh, we call it as a buddy concept in Iron Lady. And we stand at least for one Iron Lady together in that community. And we ensure that we are their support system. Okay, that's one thing. And in the program, we tell them to identify. There is a very clear, uh, specific, uh, you know, session which happens on this. How to build this kind of an, you know, system for us, ecosystem for us. We tell them to identify top ten to fifteen relationships, top relationships in their life, which they deal with on a daily basis. It can be parent, it can be in laws, it can be, you know, brothers, siblings. 
or uh, you know your own mentor or your business partner or your boss boss's boss so top 15 relationships on a daily basis they have to identify there in the program and then look at whether there is an alignment or a misalignment in each of those relationships okay ask them to write down so, so there's some they, kind of a framework a is given thing. for them to do that yes there is a workshop i mean there is a template which they will go through and it's a very detailed you know progress session which we take them through and we also tell them how they if there is a misalignment what they need to do if there is an alignment what they need to do so if there is an alignment if they say yes yes it's that's not enough there is something else which they need to do so which we tell them through the program so that's a fantastic you know uh, program which you know Aaron lady has created Wonderful. Uh, well, uh, I have a disclosure to make. Uh, I didn't know about Iron Lady uh, till uh, 21, I think. Uh, uh, uh -huh. I have a friend. Uh, 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 so she had uh, invited me to, she was involved with them. She was moderating a session on that about investor readiness uh, for okay. uh, entrepreneurs and uh, Iron Lady. So I think it was sometime in 2021, I think. Okay. Uh, so that was the first time uh, uh, it was an online session. And uh, I think uh, wow. there were women entrepreneurs from across India who had uh, logged in. So that was the first time I got to know about it. No. So uh, so uh, uh, that was, but obviously I didn't know this detail and uh, it would be interesting for all the other entrepreneurs who listen to it. Uh, and uh, perhaps you could share that URL as well. Uh, sure, yeah. So w for those who are interested, yeah www.iamironlady.com that's the website yeah perfect we'll try to uh, uh put that as well in the notes for anybody to sure. follow on that so uh coming back sorry this was not a plan but since you had mentioned yeah. iron lady i thought perhaps it would be good to uh, uh take that more from how it is also helping from a professional point of view so uh so you did mention that uh uh, Garbagudi is uh, uh, six outlets in Bangalore. Yeah. So, what is the future plan? Where is it headed from here? Yeah, uh, future for Garbagudi is Garbagudi University, what we are trying to build. So, the vision is to eradicate infertility. That is, I mean, it, for few, I think it doesn't make sense from a business perspective. But what we have seen from 11 years, looking at people go through so much of stress to take this kind of treatment and also, uh, you know, um, go through the success rate. I mean, when it gets negative, they go through huge emotions and uh, struggle with that. So we just thought the whole world, like I'll come to that when it comes to future, when we are discussing about healthcare, how this industry is moving it's all about preventive healthcare going forward. So with respect to that, we really want to move towards uh, how can we build uh, Garbhagudi towards an university where every you know infertility um, treating doctor, right? Or an entrepreneur who is working in this segment should be able to come and take the benefit of what work we have done, research which, which we have done for all these years in treating infertile people at one shot and also work towards you know, the preventive, uh, uh, preventive aspect of infertility. So university, Garbagudi University is the vision, uh, Nanjanda. So as a university, it would be academic and research oriented in the Innovation. way to... Uh, way to, if I have to uh, reinterpret what you said, to yes. make Garbagudi non-existent. <laughs> in, in the name of yeah. university, it will remain, yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the name of university. But eventually yeah. you want, you don't want to have a business of doing it if it is naturalized and people are able to have a natural course of, uh, okay, that's uh, uh, very noble for sure. But uh, in this uh, context uh, so what kind of technologies are you using uh, here uh, I yeah. mean, when you say research uh, what what technologies are at play here yeah so i mean definitely see garbhagudi has to remain uh, fulfilling the need of the you know industry today in terms of treating uh, infertile couple but definitely focusing towards research innovation 
as a part of, I mean, and also academia, we have an, already we have a reproductive health university, which we're building. We have fellowships uh, program for doctors running under Garbhagudi umbrella called uh, Garbhagudi Institute of Reproductive Health and Research. So we have affiliations from Indian Medical Association, IMA, to run courses for infertility, you know, fellowship programs. And also we are affiliated under Rajiv Gandhi University of Health Sciences, to run fellowship programs for info, I mean, uh, fertility uh, treating doctors. So under this, we are building the research and the innovation team uh, so that we can bring in the uh, knowledge of what we are trying to do in terms of holistic treatment. That's the whole vision towards which we, you know, Garbhagudi University is moving towards. Coming to the technology, so when it comes to research, AI is the next level of i mean uh, thing which is coming up which will change the whole dimension of how infertility patients will get treated and then also i mean uh, diagnosed basically so today every i mean uh, the uh, every couple who walks in will be i mean goes on with uh, talking to doctor we try to understand their history and things right so we are, I mean, building a system within Garbhagudi that every data which we are trying to capture using AI, it will also help us identify the clinical history of the patient, match it with the kind of embryos which are coming out of from, from treating them through various stages of infertility and then connecting it to the success rate. So this full end-to-end -end, uh, the uh, structure which we are building is the basis for the next level of I mean, research to happen. AI yeah, is a big thing which we are, you know, evaluating and working uh, in uh, wow. Garbhagudi. Oh, that's fantastic. But I'm just uh, curious. Uh, see, we in India don't really have uh, data protection rights and all that. So, are you capturing some kind of a permissions? Uh, how how do the patients react to it? How open yeah. or comfortable are they with this? Yeah, so the it, it 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 need not be disclosing the name of the patient. So there is a clear uh, social media consent and the research consent which we take from patients that their name will never be I mean uh, disclosed anywhere. It's a clear mandate which we write from our end, and they also accept. And once they I mean get conceived either I mean conceived positive or I mean negative. But their clinical history, what can, what they went through in their life, right? So in terms of clinical conditions and how they responded for certain injections, certain hormones, that is what is the extract, what we want, not exactly patient name and their identity. That is not needed at all for research. Right. Are you using blockchain? I'm, I'm, I'm just curious because there's so much of scope not for yet. blockchain here. Yeah, not yet. Probably, I mean, we can definitely explore yeah, seriously, because from a point of uh, how you use uh, customer data and uh, capture them to uh, keep the whole flow of customer information. And yeah. uh, also, uh, uh, there is uh, so much of opportunity to, uh, since you also engage a lot of uh, doctors and perhaps many doctors work as uh, gig workers, right? They may not be your full-time employees. They, they work as consultants. Yeah. So yeah. uh, I think medical uh, ecosystem has had this uh, gig component for quite some time, right? Uh, which yeah, is yeah. becoming a norm in uh, all other spaces. Outside so, world, yeah. So perhaps even tokenization is a great opportunity because that becomes a better rewarding system for uh, the uh, gig economy. So likewise here, since you uh, engage, uh, what, what percentage of uh, uh, ecosystem is uh, these consulting uh, or the big uh, economy players, thirty percent. Yeah, even definitely thirty. No, no, thirty percent. Because I mean, many of the doctors who are in Garbhagudi, or I mean, full time, they are in Garbhagudi helping us. Uh, but I mean, thirty percent they come from outside. They get their patients and then get our. I mean, use our infrastructure Ecosystem to infrastructure. treat. Okay, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so it's so just not uh, not they come as consultants, but they. Uh, they just come Use. and they only treat their patients using your ecosystem infrastructure. Exactly. Yes, exactly. I think, I mean, blockchain I've heard and I've also heard the advantages of 
uh, using this uh, for i mean uh, the collect collect collation of the data and to i mean uh, use it for the research activities but i have not i mean explored so definitely i would love you to connect with one of the director who works on the technology aspect in garbagudi called you know he is also one of the co-founder called hari hari srinivasan so it 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 will be really good if you can i mean just meet him talk to him or oh, one of yeah. will do that so uh so it's very encouraging that uh, you're already uh, working on uh, ai and uh, uh, in the course but maybe i think your patients are also mostly urban right your yeah, customers are urban, mostly urban because we are there in bangalore now but uh, few also come from uh, rural because we do lot of camps as of now we have done about 800 plus camps across uh you know in and around karnataka so uh, we reach out to nooks nook and corner of uh tire to cities and uh, that's where we do lot of camps you know free camps for to uh, give awareness to these kind of patients so then leading from here so what is the plan when will the numbers become 6 to 10 20 is there a plan on that Uh, direction uh, i mean camps yes adding, i mean no not the camps huh. the facilities itself okay yeah so i mean 23 is an full action planned uh, year okay. for us garbagudi so we have uh, expanding across uh, india pan india this time and uh, uh, already we have started i mean international patients are coming and then it is not that we have center there we will be able to get right so through our i mean business development team doing a fantastic work of reaching out to these international patients and getting them to get take this right kind of treatment under garbagudi so uh, pan india is what we are looking at in 23 24 probably okay. another five centers added yeah okay so looking at you getting international uh, uh, customers or patients if you will so perhaps another three years you will also go international then yeah definitely yeah yeah wonderful uh see uh here uh, from a point of uh, leading it uh, what are the most important decisions you think uh, that uh, you make right i mean obviously there's an organization you also have co-founders but what are the uh, few key decisions that you think are uh, critical from your point of view in building like, running operating scaling yeah yeah so like uh, you know i handle operations at garbagudi so uh, operations being really intensive in terms of people management and then especially patient uh, delivery side right the customer uh, mm -hmm. satisfaction and then uh, supporting them through this uh, the journey of uh this emotional journey whatever they go through when the starting point when they come till the conception so it's um, a lot of i mean people engagement which happens for us on a day to day basis especially for me so i always look at uh, being you know operations uh, coo being coo of garbagudi i always look at how can we leverage uh, you know uh, the customer satisfaction at one point to giving them the best support through this journey that's what you know key i look at and at every stage we follow a garbagudi way so one of the big statement which we keep telling every iterating every day during our daily prayers for patients which we follow as a culture within the organization is that every couple who walks in will walk out with a smile so whatever science and technology is giving us today has a uh, you know a support and a leverage what we have today we can support couple who comes in but finally the conception is not even in technology hand or even in the doctor's hand whatever they can do they can do but still can we ensure that every couple walks in will walk out with a smile so no matter how i mean tough difficult and easy it is but we we are on that mission so how do you handle that see smile is perhaps a natural if it is a success but success is still limited right uh, this yeah. line of business so given that how do you manage that part among those who are post this intervention may still not be able to conceive so conceive yeah perhaps they yeah. Uh, what is the uh, i think i have seen people doing multiple attempts at it yeah so true. Uh, so 
So what makes them come back to you versus going to another place? Yeah, today the way Garbagudi has built its brand, uh, I'm happy to say this with a lot of pride I say this. If they have multiple failures, right, either through IVF or any other treatment in fertility, the, today the brand uh, you know, value what we carry is go to Garbagudi. If you do not conceive there, the chances of your conception is very less. So that's the, I mean, uh, brand which we have built. So I carry this with a lot of pride uh, to my team members and say, so whenever I go and meet people or whenever I speak to, I mean, fellow doctors outside, uh, consultants, so they say, okay, you, you know, whenever they, when any patient comes to us so that they have taken treatment at certain stage and they're not able to conceive or I as a doctor, I treat them and I see that I'm unable to help them. I tell them, go to Garbagudi. So that's the, I mean, brand work we carry and multiple failures is a strength of Garbagudi handling them. So we have a lot of conceptions, uh, success rates, which has happened because of the protocols, what we follow. And like I said, uh, I, I see there are very small things, which uh, as an, you know, uh, Garbagudi way, which we have built in with, within the system saying at every stage, what are the things which we need to look at, including doctors and the operations team and also at the business development end. So what are the things which they need to look at when they're handling uh, you know, uh, fertility, uh, infertility taking, uh, you know, treatment taking couple. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, it's very difficult to, I mean, give that smile for people who do not, I mean, get positive results. So, what is that one thing which we have inculcated is if at any point in time uh, that their success rate goes, I mean, there's a, the, uh, the final result goes negative. So, we tell them that they can come for the healing treatment with us, which is another uh, segment which we support them into that control. That is the integrated in part of your Integrated, treatment. yeah, holistic approach towards the treatment. And also we give them a lot of online sessions for them to, I mean, cope up with this journey. And after three attempts of IVF, that's almost the end of the, I mean, fertility treatment. We do not encourage them. Not, see, we can do another two cycles, but that doesn't mean, you know, any good, that doesn't do any good for the patient. So we are very clear. We communicate it very clearly saying that after three IVF cycles, please, I mean, take a step back and then see there are a lot of options today. Uh, adoption is another, I mean, great opportunity what we have today. So we help them go to those adoption centers and we give them recommendation letters from our side that they can go and meet there and then take the support of uh, adoption centers for these things but it's really challenging for them I totally understand mm -hmm. but whatever we have done today it has I mean really built that brand value for us but looking at the way our society is in terms of amount of pollution the stress levels the work culture looks like uh, you could probably do with even 100 centers and do uh, so uh, though, though you ideally wish that uh, you're able to create a better ecosystem, but the way it is, it looks like you 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 only have to add more facilities. Definitely, you are true. You are right. Yeah. So, uh, uh, in this, uh, what are your uh, biggest uh, fears and uh, uh, the threats that you see in the way? I mean, this business is right uh, and. Uh, uh, what what uh, you know? What calls make you worried? That hope this is not that call. What what kind of fears do you face, and how do you handle that? Yeah, like uh, as you know, all of us are seeing uh, every industry is going through this change today. So especially healthcare, where uh, it is becoming much uh, commercial proposition, right? So. Uh, it is getting really expensive. Uh, treatments are really getting expensive. So I would love, I mean, one of the fear and one of the things which I key, which I very, which I'm, which I look at uh, from a very deeper perspective is that the economy of, I mean, each individual as a citizen in the country, will they be able to afford these kind of treatments going forward? 
right? That is one thing. And other thing is that how to make it really affordable for everyone. Because as we see, we do a lot of work in the rural areas also in terms of camps and reaching out to them through consultants, various doctors out there in, the, in those rural areas. We see that it is totally unaffordable for them today. So we are working uh, aggressively in ensuring that we bring that kind of a treatment for these kind of you know patients, especially since we are there for uh, infertility uh, segment. So we are working aggressively on bring, bringing the making the treatment affordable for everyone, every strat of society. Oh, is it the automation that will bring the cost down? Or what do you think will yes. bring the cost down? Definitely automation will play a big role and like, you know, AI based support, you know, systems which we can build over a period of time, which will help doctors to understand and then treat them right at the right time, right? See, you try, you understand the clinical history of the patient and then doctor takes a decision to give one level of treatment without even knowing how much success rate it would add by treating that couple with that protocol. Right. If you have this, I mean, data documented and readily available for doctors to go through when they're treating certain set of parameter, clinical set of parameters, it's you know, probably some 200 set of, I mean, permutations and combinations which can happen, right? M maybe more than that. So if this is the, I mean, clinical history and if these are the things which they have gone through and this is their lifestyle, so basically this set of, I mean, uh, protocols with this kind of injections would definitely give them this much of success rate is what lacking today in the, you know, industry. So that knowledge, so is there any kind of an app? Share, is there any kind of an app that people could uh, download and, you know, uh, as they, you know, fill in the data about what they do, what they eat and uh, how frequently they work out or what kind of work. So that, uh, yeah. you know, before they apply to Garbhagriha, Garbhagudi, that yeah. they fill in. Is there something like that? Uh, is it a... There is, the, the app is, yeah, app is yet to come, but we have a, a platform in our website okay. where people can go and check their fertility quotient. And in every okay. corporate okay. program, when we address uh, corporates, because they are the ones who go through huge stress. So we tell them to check their fertility quotient. So even for male and for female infertility, and even if they walk into any Garbhagudi center, we will be able to support them at any age, right? Even if they're married, not married yet. Uh, so they can check their fertility quotient. And today there is, uh, uh, thanks to technology today, we have come up with egg freezing. The embryo so, freezing was there, but today there is an, a concept of egg freezing. So right. even if they are not married yet and they're really career focused and oriented, they can freeze their eggs and then come back and then get so it. So is Garbhagudi doing that as well? Yes, we have that facility in Garbhagudi. How, how freezing is, facility. Uh, I mean, uh, I've read about, uh, you know, international stars doing it and all that. But uh, how yeah. prevalent is such a practice in India? It is not much uh, in uh, all the centers and all the smaller uh, fertility clinics, whatever we see today in India. But many big giants are uh, trying to establish this as their you know, support structure for all the uh, couple who want to, I mean, take it up, uh, you know, family, fulfilling family at a later stage in their life. So do you see this could be one of those tools for TAT, as you mentioned? This and that? Future. Yeah, definitely. This and that. <laughs> <laughs> so they can definitely right. explore that and technology is there to support today. Yeah. Well, how expensive this becomes? Uh, not relatively. very expensive. Oh, no, not very expensive. Yeah. So it is if they're able to, I mean, get the uh, IVF done. So with the same cost, I mean, egg freezing will happen for them. And uh, going forward, it will still, I mean, come down because today the media costs are a little high for those egg freezing, you know, things. So a lot of, I mean, companies um, are coming up to in, with, uh, with, I mean, budget friendly options for media, for doctors and you know, hospitals. So definitely cost will come down. And uh, what percentage of growth do you see in uh, Garbhagudi for this happening? How much Not of much. inquiries are coming? Yeah, not much actually. It's quite surprising, even though we, I mean, we announced them that say make, make use of this, then struggling later stages, right? After 30, 35. So come and take up the IVF treatment. Better you can have your egg freezing done. But and only is I egg see freezing some 5%. Is 100%? 
the recovery of eggs is not 100%. Okay. It's that, uh, see, once they are frozen, right, we thaw them and get them into the I mean, room temperature. So that time the recovery is not 100%, but definitely it is not less. Also, it is somewhere around 80, 85%. So which it's a very good chance which they can. Yeah, yeah. Which definitely they should explore. So uh, I, we have seen only, I mean, 8% to 10% of inquiries. I'm just now, curious, are much. there insurance for this egg freezing as well? I'm just That's exactly, so I will come during the industry, you know, things future, <laughs> okay. uh, things when you ask, you know, I okay. think people should should look at i mean uh, getting in oh, insurance okay. to this okay it's interesting not, we'll yeah. get to that only few companies corporate companies have them some group insurance inculcated right now but not many for that but can you market it? Is it uh, legal in india for you to market or promote that you have this facility insurance you are asking no the egg freezing because you said people yes love yes it. it's legal i mean it's one what of is? the services okay. yeah legally declared services yeah so you do market promoted yes, but still yes, you're not 100%. getting much inquiry on that yeah yeah not getting much inquiry yeah no that's 10 interesting because is what i see yeah uh, in fact uh, the women entrepreneur as a number is also increasing so uh, so yeah probably uh, very soon we'll yeah i think it's awareness i mean the challenge is with the awareness so probably i mean it will definitely that, that's the next uh, level of growth in fertility segment so definitely it will get up right so uh, uh, anyway this uh, you you mentioned that uh, uh, as we move forward and talk about industry sector so uh, where do you see this uh, healthcare ecosystem going now where, do, where does it stand as of now okay so healthcare ecosystem as i see like i said it has to move towards preventive health care. So that's the, I mean, way forward. So definitely uh, just only addressing today's challenges, only addressing today's need will not do any good for, I mean, any patients or any, any uh, you know, couple, especially if it is incredibly but healthcare as a thing also, it will definitely, I mean, it has to move towards preventive and I, we are already seeing, right? So a lot of people coming up with uh, preventive healthcare ecosystems, which they are uh, trying to build. So that's one thing which I look as, you know, healthcare system moving towards. COVID and, did show the vulnerabilities we have, right? I mean, we were sure. grossly underprepared for pretty much everything. True. True. But and after that, a lot of things have changed, right? Government has become far more uh, aggressive about it, infrastructure true. coming, money is being spent. True, 100%. So healthcare, though, definitely it is, I mean, and uh, but they have taken up really, really you know, serious because like this pandemic taught us, what was the shortage of beds, right, for the population what we have? Even so doctor shortage, right? 100%. Skilled professionals, is a big challenge, including, I mean, forget about doctors, Nanjunda, sisters, they can do the first level of treatment if they are skilled and trained. We do not no, have but, nursing, uh, nurses today. Nurses make a lot better money internationally, right? Why can't that change? If people are paid better here, probably they'll stay here. It looks yeah, like India yeah. is a nurse supplier for the world. World, and, uh, yeah. And uh, many people, you know, many other friends in the hospital, healthcare business also tell me that we don't get nurses how is it i mean it's very odd this right is, one side india yeah. supplies nurses globally and we don't have true yeah this is exactly where i feel i mean government intervention is needed see if is we it can uh, is it not economy? yeah private I mean, sectors the... whatever to extent we can do we can do right it is not that i'm uh, blaming either the private sector or the you know government as such but so what can government they, do here yeah so if healthcare in india can be somehow managed along with government. Today, it has become entirely, I mean, uh, private owned and private uh, operated, right? In the countries, if you look at where government is taking care of the health aspect of that country, there is a lot more which we can do. A lot more uh, together what see, we can Contrary do. to most entrepreneurs who say government should stay out of exactly. business and you are in the healthcare business and you're saying government should play a more active role, that would potentially threaten yeah. your very business, right? Because yeah, because what what you know a perspective which has come in is the moment government comes, the private establishments have to go out. That's not the way, right? Today's world is about collaboration. 
private you know uh, i mean establishments have the technology advantage they can leverage technology they have experts who can support government in building these kind of you know infrastructures and get right people into the uh, you know system so definitely if government and private establishments can combine together join hands together in building this then it's a fantastic combination and it's a miraculous combination which can definitely change the healthcare landscape in india are you doing something about uh, nursing also in the university you talked about garbhaguri uh... yeah yeah so right now uh, we have come till uh, the uh, launching the courses for the embryologists so another aspect in infertility right so skilled uh, embryologists is a big challenge today so we are training going and training to msc graduates and bsc graduates to get skilled uh, to become a you know trained embryologist so we are coming to nursing from we have such a high launch. rate of unemployment and there is so much of demand for skilled resource so exactly. how is the healthcare ecosystem trying to bridge it uh, exactly who i mean i think this ecosystem i think is this where your business is also the status about or what exactly is status role in the ecosystems building space yeah this is exactly where in statist we have brought three levels of uh, program one is called the spark as a startup ecosystem for all healthcare entrepreneurs and budding you know startup entrepreneurs who wants to venture into this uh, industry and the segment and you know ignite where scaling is a challenge for healthcare entrepreneurs it can be technology or service uh, product health product uh, anything so ignite is a program where every entrepreneur will experience how to scale their business to the next level make use of already the government policies available and make use of the private establishments which are available work in collaboration how they can scale their business and the third is the empower program under strategies which we uh, look at you know investment being part of the game being you know playing a, you know taking that skin in the game right so to ensure that we give them a lot of a structure in a support structure in terms of investment also so that's what we do in uh, strategies nanjunda so an end to end ecosystem for healthcare entrepreneurs to build sustainable enduring healthcare enterprises i would say uh see a uh... i just came across somebody shared in uh, whatsapp today they said uh, 37 lakh students didn't make it to college in karnataka this year uh, the last year so uh, is there something you can do in looking at see all these people are, uh, for whatever reasons they have not been able to i know i didn't uh, read the report that just reading the heading but uh, uh, i'm sure there's a lot of low skill jobs are also there or skill can be imparted once i mean if some kind of a system uh, uh so college as in they must be up to 10th standard right so uh, right there is right. one side there is so much yeah. of pool of people available is there something that you could do with or is that some some model of status to tap into it yeah yeah that's where i know i have started working with right now engineering colleges okay so where uh, i am working with two engineering colleges now right now and that's the context where i had also come to plea for a conversation right so right now in uh, sit siddhiganga institute of technology where i did my engineering we have an incubation center there where we are supporting you know any healthcare tech product uh, you know companies for incubating and also build certain skills for uh, people to i mean even even if they are graduate what kind of skills they can build to ensure that they can get into this kind of industry is one thing what we mm-hmm. are working towards and another is new horizon engineering college where i'm uh, closely associated with them so what are these students. these are some programs for the students that you do as how they can look at being part of healthcare the system uh, yes. is, these are some It, kind of a, a structured program yes. it's a structured program and already i mean engineering colleges are i mean hats off to them apart from their i mean curriculum and academic pressure whatever they go through they are doing a fantastic job of incubating today if engineering colleges and like this maybe starting point is engineering college today like this any i mean colleges if they can have incubation centers even a graduates right 
BSc, BA, BCom. So if they can have some incubation centers where their skills can be trained, upgraded, upskilled, so that they can get, I mean, industry ready when they're coming out. So that's but a fantastic a I mean, uh, thing which we can build. College. See, but there are very few engineering colleges, right, who also are part of a large group of institutions with uh, access to medical college. Majority of the engineering colleges are in isolation or right. no connection right. to medical. So in such places, how are you getting them to think healthcare? Because I think uh, a lack of medical understanding is a big gap in the process of even becoming an entrepreneur in the healthcare space, right? True, true. See, it is not that they have to serve exactly in the clinical aspect of the uh, healthcare uh, system, No, but right? from a expertise, understanding, knowledge, is there something that you bring in? Yeah, so that in other... Garbagudi, okay. yeah, in Garbagudi, we have I a mean, lot of counselors, right, who are, who come from BA, become background, who are, I mean, trained to become counselors, so with us. So we train them, we support them to get these kind of, I mean, skills upgraded. And we also work with certain skill development programs which are happening outside, uh, who can train these kind of, you know, our counselors outside and get them into the system. And a uh, lot of, I mean, uh, reception jobs, what they can do in terms of consents. And like I said, mm -hmm. consent is a major thing in infertility segment because mm -hmm. without their consent, we should we will never be able to use the, their I mean, clinical history or their I mean, occupation history for the research activities, whatever we do. So explaining them, taking consent from them and making them comfortable with these kind of you know, mm -hmm. uh, work, what happens within Garbagudi that not to get I mean either uh, uh, tensed or not to worry that their data is getting disclosed so these yeah, things it's th there is a whole set of program I mean work which happens with with these kind of I mean uh, people who come inside the healthcare system we do not have who do not have clinical expertise okay. Okay. is there You're anybody on mute, yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody you could uh, name who are actually impacting this industry as you see right now, who are uh, working towards changing the, you know, you, you talked about it, right? That this needs to move towards that direction. But are there anybody you see who are working towards this currently that you want to talk about name? From healthcare perspective, or asking, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So from healthcare, I've seen. I mean, big chains like it could be people or even the institutions yeah. or industry, what companies, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, yeah. I've seen. I mean, government do a lot of work, started. I mean, realizing few things okay. now from after pandemic, like you said, amazing. I mean, central. I've seen very good ministers. I don't want to. I mean, label it because it becomes a much political. I mean, conversation. So central, I've seen few ministers do a fantastic job. And in state, I've seen Tamil Nadu and then Orissa doing a fantastic job, already moving towards preventive health care and then bringing a lot of support structure for these kind of entrepreneurs. Uh, to And having, see, I had not seen healthcare expos. Right now, we have healthcare expos hap happening so that doctors and then private establishments can go and take advantage of the government policies and funds available. A lot of MSME support for healthcare entrepreneurs entrepreneurs is coming today earlier i mean healthcare was considered to be okay they have enough money so no need of supporting them right so they were i mean all small scale entrepreneurs used to get a lot of benefits but today i've seen i mean healthcare uh, entrepreneurs also have these kind of you know benefits so definitely government has taken a big step but not enough a uh, lot of things to be done like considering our population and where how the industry is growing in terms of technology and science today and challenges what uh, our people are going through with all the lifestyle issues and like you said uh, pollution and other things so and uh, few i mean private uh, establishments uh, like you know apollo i've seen they are in they are i mean uh, uh, investing a lot of money and also building the right infrastructure to get robotics into uh, surgery right they have done a great work uh, in that extent so amazing work by these people okay. and uh, one of the things you uh, mentioned uh, as status is that you're creating an ecosystem for these early stage entrepreneurs, you also fund them. So, uh, how is it? Is it that you you uh, you personally invest, or you also work with uh, uh, 
uh, investor network or uh, investment firms? What kind of uh, uh, effort that goes in with the startup? Yeah. So, like I said, uh, we have our own, I mean, set of uh, investors who are, I mean, interested only in healthcare industry. So, we have collaborated with them, partnered with them to support this kind of, I mean, uh, uh, the companies and the startups. And also, I'm working with engineering colleges to build these kind of uh, products in healthcare, uh, new innovations in healthcare, research products in healthcare uh, from scratch. So personally, I mean, I'm investing a lot of time in supporting them, mentoring them. Mm -hmm. And I also, I mean, invest in a uh, lot of these healthcare mm -hmm. startups to support them to the next level of growth. So obviously, it's the easiest part would be in the service space right healthcare services right. right but on the medical device it's a very long cycle right uh, because uh, the product evolution uh, before it even gets to somebody to buy it to start applying employing it in in any process so uh, how how do you go about it uh, what percentage of your interest is in the medical device space Medical device is altogether, uh, I mean, different industry. I basically come from the service uh, industry perspective always. But right, no, I was just it, curious since you came instrument. with the electronics yeah. background. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I like, uh, you know, I, I since I am very, you know, uh, I, I carry a lot of passion for healthcare, yeah. I mean, products. So one such, uh, you know, product which we are, I mean, supporting in New Horizon, colleges that they're coming up with, their students are coming up with a device. Today, we have BP, a different instrument to measure. Sugar, we have another, I mean, diabetes, we have another instrument to measure. Hemoglobin, we have to go for a blood test. So all these inculcated, we are coming up with a product. Mm -hmm. So which has, I mean, every household can have this as the instrument, as a first level of diagnosis for the challenges, what, you know, uh, everyone, uh, all of us need to go through at every 30 years of, uh, whenever we cross 30 years of age. So on a daily basis, we can check how we are progressing in terms of cholesterol, hemoglobin. So mm -hmm. these things, are my i mean uh, real passion which i carry so i'm just supporting uh, entrepreneurs there but medical instruments and devices needs a lot of support today that kind of i mean infrastructure is not there only companies like philips simmons and then ge are working on these things but no big i mean uh, improvements in terms of bringing great advancements there needs a lot so of I mean, any yeah. effort from your strategist towards creating some kind of an ecosystem towards that because I've been part of some medical device hackathons with IAC. Mm -hmm. So a lot of ideas come year on year. Okay. And uh, obviously, you know where they get lost, right? Because it demands a lot more financial support. Of course, design, engineering, and even expertise mm -hmm. uh, are brought in through a lot of network. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think our uh, investor ecosystem is looking for... Uh, very short term returns but something like this needs a much longer term approach yeah so, yeah no i mean uh, there are uh, investors and partners who are ready to collaborate uh, nanjuda to be honest i mean there are you know people who are ready to contribute not only on the short term goals but on the long term goals uh, to bring in these kind of uh, devices and instruments in terms of innovation so definitely i can i mean explore through stratist and then uh, we'll see how we can uh, support them in bringing so, the right kind uh, of investment then apart from working with colleges can these startups apply directly to you is there are there specific programs that you run under that yes for stratist i mean under stratist yeah. they can apply for spark program wherein i mean that's the starting level uh, startup program which we support for if they have any innovative ideas and the products uh, if they have so they can definitely take support from us so, so yeah. you are saying they can apply even with just an idea or uh, they need to have some <laughs> mvp a minimum yeah. viable product to come with preferably they need to have at least a minimum viable product i mean an effort towards building that but even if they have an idea we can definitely look and explore if they're keen and interested and oriented see what i've seen which i constantly tell you know all the students who are working in this startup ecosystem is that today's tomorrow they get one offer at the end of the year saying that they get about i mean 48 lakhs per annum some packages comes in as an offer because they are also studying 
So they leave this entrepreneur, I mean, spark because I understand what it takes for them, right? At that hard work of five years, 10 years without money, I mean, struggle to build something from scratch is not easy. So that mindset of an, an entrepreneurship is uh, really missing today. And I see only few, I mean, small percentage take this journey forward. Yeah, true. Do you want to share the URL where people can apply for, uh, look it up? and? Yeah. So like, you want me to, I mean, share the screen? You or... can say that. And, yeah, uh, w we'll anyway share, yeah, yeah. URL I'll just share. Yeah, www .stratist, S -T -R -E -I -S -T dot in stratist dot in is the website. Under that, for Spark program, they can apply. They can go and apply. So, uh, what what kind of a recommendation you would want to make for the startups, whether they come to Stratist or otherwise? What are the you know, top of the hat advice that you want to give to people who are working in the healthcare services space that what should they be looking at, you know, considering the kind of changes that we are foreseeing right now. Definitely, uh, I suggest to look at um, building bootstrapping business. Do not, I mean, run directly towards investment. This is my has been personal experience working with a lot of entrepreneurs. Because it's a never-ending story. Investment fundraising is a never-ending story. Even though I support, I have group of I mean investors who come in and then do a significant amount of support for entrepreneurs. But I always suggest that you know you as an entrepreneur need to have that you know fire in the belly to at least I mean in the starting stages get ready to experience this journey and then make it happen because. It's finally, I mean, if you are not satisfied, right, as an entrepreneur about, I mean, if you are not convinced about your product or idea and then you only pitch it for the sake of pitching for investors, are you convinced that this is a right revenue model? Then, till then, I mean, it doesn't click. So, like, that's what I tell them. So, just focus on creating the right, you know, product, service, and then make it, you know, at least a revenue generating one. It is tough. I'm not, you know, denying. I'm not saying it's not easy game to play. It's not of, and it's not cup of tea for everyone. But I say, healthcare entrepreneurship is not for um, everyone. Okay, it it needs that kind of, I mean, uh, uh, journey to go through. Uh, but definitely, it's worth the journey to explore. So sitting on the other side, I can happily share this, and I have happily done it, and I know it can be, uh, you know, explored. And I'm sure, you know, many who are with me in Stratist also agree on this. We can happily do this. Okay, and the second important thing is focus on preventive healthcare going forward. One is definitely curative healthcare is needed to support whatever the challenges you know every person goes through in health. But moving forward, all of us are focusing on our own fitness. All of us are focusing on how we need to, I mean, focus towards uh, working on our fitness goals and then how can we be healthy. So today that is the focus for the next generation, right? So preventive is what is the way forward. So if something can be done in that segment, then you will survive and then you will also you know, scale big time. So uh, what books, podcasts or movies that you would want to recommend to uh, people who are looking at, uh, you know, or who are in the business of healthcare or who are startups in healthcare or who want to get into healthcare uh, to build some venture? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, one book which made a huge difference when, when I studied during, you know, uh, pandemic, I had heard about this book long time back, but I had not explored a book called Good to Great. So it's uh, after reading that book, you know, so many things I was able to, I mean, connect the dots of, you know, in my own life and for Stratist and for Garbhudi. So uh, best recommendation is uh, good to great book which every entrepreneur should uh, read and then experience and explore in their entrepreneurial journey and definitely uh, entrepreneurship handbook by uh, hbr is another book which has really helped me to understand from very i mean basic level to scaling up the business to the next level of growth um, i think these two books do a fantastic job for setting the right thought process and 
belief system for us to explore and definitely i mean mentors mentioned i think i mean uh, what they have experienced already in this journey if we can you know get that knowledge and expertise i think we will be able to much more i mean fast forward our growth and progress it becomes really easy connecting with right people have some accountability partners for implementation because all of us will i mean happily explore networking but when it comes to implementation we fail so have some accountability partners as also mentors who can i mean nudge you support you in building whatever we want to build oh that's a very very uh, interesting point so uh... so in this course do, do you still uh, have mentors for you uh, who do you look up to as a mentor for uh, your effort oh yeah <laughs> my mentor is uh, from healthcare industry is uh, mr sudhir sudhir pai is the ex ceo of vikram hospital so he supports me a great extent in, and he's also on there on the board of uh, stratus supporting me and from the technology uh, perspective i have like i, I said one of the co-founder of gurbagudi hari and uh, his friend narendra who who is a who is a in who works in deloitte in technology aspect so both of them support to a great extent uh, from the technology aspect and from the business entrepreneurship and then keeping that spirits high and then have that i mean connect to that spiritual aspect like i said infinity is a mahatre has been my greatest strength and faith and rajesh bhat from iron lady so i mean this i have i mean complete set of holistic uh, support structure which i have built for myself and i and i think it's a touch with god's grace yeah no that's the uh... that's my so how do you uh, uh how do you evaluate your own uh, efforts i don't want to call it success right how do you evaluate your own efforts and when do you uh, do you do it in some frequency uh some regularity or is it something that you go to uh that uh, uh, uh mahatreya camp is that the way you do that i mean how do you do it i i'm feeling you're reading my mind <laughs> whatever i mean i'm thinking at the back and is coming as a question here. so yes i mean i i go for uh, annually i do that exercise okay so i set goals that what is that in 2023 i would look forward in terms of growth for the future preparing myself for the future and what are the goals which i have taken previous year how far i have i mean come through that and was there any lag lead uh, so how do i measure all these things i have a set of exercises which i do and usually i take time my off one week total in silence with Uh, an annual spiritual retreat called hdb with mahatreya higher deeper and beyond that's exactly where i do this exercise and come and prepare myself for next level of growth and through iron lady since i i have that i mean community and support structure i'm accountable for my own growth there uh, and you know uh, that uh, we build our five year strategic road map so we are accountable for that and we keep looking at that we have lot of sessions which we conduct for all of us to go back and then see that uh, where we where are we progressing where are we not progressing what kind of support needed or i mean should i re look at whatever i thought through last year so there are so many things which happens right so few things i mean i may today it may not be relevant uh, we, i feel which i thought through last year so i i just go back and re look at these things and then build it so thought process comes from my annual spiritual retreat and then the implementation support happens through iron lady so yeah uh you mentioned earlier uh, that uh, you don't look at balance i think that was in the context of iron lady right uh, not balance but uh, uh, maximize maximize amplify maximum yeah. uh, and then uh, everything you do from a point of reviewing your past year and uh, how do you grow further see uh, which is perfect but uh, how do you handle uh, uh, how do you even recognize something as a failure something you could not accomplish right something you set as a goal for the year and uh, one uh, see uh, what i feel is that the most entrepreneurs are so optimistic right we are given to be very very optimistic so most of the time we even refuse to acknowledge any failure 
because only thing you want to do is win so you don't even want to recognize lose right so in such a scenario how do you acknowledge that you didn't do something i mean of course growing every year growing is uh, is it's kind of becoming part of the dna perhaps right i mean you have to be achieving keep going mm-hmm. growing and all that but how do you first recognize that you didn't achieve something or didn't accomplish something and how do you uh, handle it yeah truly uh, to share my experience of being accountable okay for my own growth and uh, for people around i also support other entrepreneurs for their i mean growth i am also accountable for them and they are accountable for me so one thing is i i mean we make a plan right so what is that i want to accomplish in this year and there is a fantastic formula which uh, mahatreya starters is acr okay accept the changeable okay if you feel i mean this the goal you wanted to and they want to i mean change and things you accept the changeable change the unchangeable okay and then if the even these two are not possible then remove yourself from the unacceptable so whether it is business or personal life this acr formula works magically okay so this is where i keep myself accountable for all the goals which i set and i see am i just accepting which is the unacceptable thing for me i'm just i mean procrastinating in accepting that uh, will i uh, i will do it i will do it i think this opportunity will click or this maybe may that opportunity may click and then i may move forward you know i have a, i mean very clearly said so three opportunities which i try and explore and may not happen then i'll just pivot myself saying i go back to my mentors i go back and talk to them and say this is what i've been experiencing and this is what is happening so do you think i'm moving in the right direction so definitely one is being accountable and then seeking and support of people around me to which uh, to you know to whom i am accountable for i will go talk to them discuss and then they say no you are taking the decision too fast i think you should hold on to this for some more time try these things and then come back so that's exactly where board eh for organizations how frequently do you do that three my every every quarterly i review my goals no, quarterly I, mean, i do it going with my to your goal, mentors goal. you said right is it uh, Quart- at I mean, the time monthly you monthly once i have or it's a, a pre-scheduled lunch. thing it's a oh, pre-scheduled okay. thing for me okay. so monthly once i definitely catch up with them discuss with them uh, but quarterly organization goals and my personal goals i review it end to end thoroughly with them and is it the same way you do with your mentees the startups you yes, mentor or the that's other what is the first commitment i take from them are you ready for this game are you ready for this orientation are you ready to be accountable not many they, they find it difficult but i i mean the first mindset happens there that's where i know i tell them that's the discovery phase which you will go through uh, being part of statist all right so uh, uh, how how do you uh, 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 so is that some kind of a agreement that you initiate with the startups when you're signing up so you give them that these are the things you need to adhere to follow and stick to and is that how you approach or is it a online yeah, thing when they apply of... for it online they just yeah. have to yeah a set of i mean guidelines are there for the sake of i mean formalizing it but i truly believe in and i tell them also i invite them to make keep the accountability for themselves it is not i mean i am not accountable actually even though i have a board at stratest i think than me accountable to the board for all the growth and things whatever i am supposed to explore i feel i am much more accountable to myself for the growth and the um goals which i take up so that's when i you know ask them and then be accountable for those things so majority of them take some time to understand what i'm trying to say because it's it's not that they they have been mentored like this any time before so they take lot of time to i mean digest what i try to say but it's a constant journey constant reflection what i keep making with them every week when i meet them for sessions fantastic thank you thank you so much for sharing uh, uh, about uh, garbagudi and uh, about status and about uh, your perspectives on the healthcare sector 
and the industry, the ecosystem, and what you're trying to do, and how you approach, uh, uh, you know, the whole uh, running of business, and also how do you approach a sense of accountability, which is fantastic, and also you, uh, what you follow is also what you preach. So that's uh, uh, that's a, uh, uh, I think most of the time we take it uh, that these are fundamentals, but. I think we all know how difficult it is to do that. Right. So, yeah. So thank you. Thank you once again. And uh, so uh, I'll uh, connect back with you to talk about your uh, predictions on the future and how you're looking at future. So thank you so much. And uh, uh, dear audience, uh, uh, this was, uh, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. And if you still have anything to reach out to, I will be sharing uh, uh, her uh, coordinates and uh, please feel free to write and uh, I hope it's okay to share your uh, uh, yes. or the public yes. link so that they can reach yeah. out to you on the public links itself. Perhaps sure. we could share your uh, LinkedIn as well. Sure. Yeah. Sure. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we'll catch you soon. Take care. Bye. Thank you.